everyone. Welcome to Rev It Up with Earl Garnett. I'm your host, Earl Garnett. Okay, so this is my 2014 Shelby GT500. It's a little bit of a story how I got to be owning this car. When I first got back into the hobby, I bought a 2012 SRT8 Challenger with the automatic transmission. Super cool car, love the way that it looks, but there was something lagging with it. Maybe it was the automatic transmission, I don't know. So traded it in, lost a bunch of money and got a 2013 SRT8 Challenger with a six-speed manual. And that car was a lot of fun as well. But as time went on, I started honestly getting bored with it. And uh, I decided to, after doing a little bit of research, factory or order a ZL1 Camaro, the Gen 5 edition, in which I think that car just looks so badass. And that car was a lot of fun to drive as well. But still, I don't know what it is, but there was something just still missing. So uh, this car was in the back of my mind at, uh, throughout this whole process. But I wasn't really much of a Mustang guy at the time, or even a Ford guy at the time. And that was just due to lack of uh, experience and knowledge, I think, more than anything. So I th said to myself, well, if one ever comes up that's grabber blue with flat black stripes, I will purchase it. But at this time, the car was well out of production and they weren't making them anymore. So I thought, uh, you know, it'll never come up. Well, literally a week later, one did come up on Kijiji at a dealer not far from my house. So I went there and pretty much bought it immediately. The guy let me take it for a test drive. And by the time I got out of the parking lot, I knew this car was for me. A few other things I really like about this car. I mean, I love the badges on it, the snakes, cobras. It just, it's so cool. And I love it when I start in the garage and the dishes rattle in the kitchen and the wife is giving me a hard time. So with that, why don't we take a look at the interior? So this is the interior of this car. Not really a lot to talk about. It's very subtle. It's got a lot of quality hard plastics in it and stuff like that. But you know what, in my mind, like who cares? That's not what this car is made to do. It is supposed to be, you know, a race car for the streets. And it is, the seats are comfortable. It's got a snake on the steering wheel, which is reason enough to buy this car. Snake on the on the seat. And I just love the subtlety of it personally. Like I, what I, the only thing I don't like, and I'm probably the only car guy that'll ever say this, is I don't like these touch screens. I prefer just to have gauges. But that's just my personal opinion. Maybe I'm a little bit old school. I like the subtlety of this as just GT500 er and I like the paneling on that. It, it's a perfect little cockpit and it's a lot of fun to drive and that's really all you need for a car like this. Another super cool thing about this car is obviously it's got the Cobra badge there as well. I love it how it's on one side of the car not centered and my favorite part is that it has no grill at all and this is to, to uh, promote cooling for it. So every once in a while I got to pull a Prius out of that grill on my way home. Okay, so this car's got 662 horsepower and 632 foot-pounds of torque. I think it's time to take it for a ride. My thoughts on the 2014 Shelby GT500. As I was mentioning before, that I was fortunate enough to, at the same time to have uh, the 2014 ZL1 Camaro and this car at the same time for about two years. And uh, you know, all the critics at the time were saying that the uh, the ZL1 was the car and it won all the competitions and head-to-heads and stuff like that. Which, be that as it may, I guess maybe on a racetrack or something like that, they, that might be true. But for me, driving this car was just, simply put, a lot more fun. It was, it, 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 you feel so alive while you drive, it's such raw power. Everything about it is mechanical and uh, for me personally, that's what I really like about this car. It uh, just strikes emotion as you're driving it, which I do believe is the actual most important thing. And um, you know, it's got the usual short uh, shortcomings, whatever, with the hard plastic or whatever. But honestly, I don't care about that at all. Because really, the motor, the shifter, the acceleration, everything about this car is visceral and really fun to drive. The clutch in this car is very heavy. It's at least three times as hard as my ZL1 was. And uh, even the new Shelby GT350, I got a test drive one of those, which I want that car 
and I intend on getting it somehow, but I'm not willing to sacrifice this car. But anyways, the clutch was a little too light in my opinion. I've heard that some guys are taking out this a spring or something like that to stiffen it up a bit. But the clutch and the gear shifter, from what I read, are deliberately set to match each other. And uh, that way they have an equal balance feel. So you really notice that when you're driving this car and it takes a while to get used to because after a couple of hours your leg is definitely hurting but I don't think I would have it any other way. Um, I don't know, this car for me is just perfect for that type of thing. Like I call this car my city car which is kind of hilarious but the reason why I call it that is because it's so fun to drive in the city. Light to light, burnouts, um, all of that stuff about it is, is so much fun to do. Which is why I kind of want a GT350 to kind of do some of the driving we're going to go out and do now. Some more, uh, you know, canyon carving style type, type driving. So that's why I do really want that car. But under no circumstances at this point am I willing to uh, give this car up. Getting more horsepower on this car would be pretty simple to do, but I think at that point what you would have to do is uh, change out the wheels and get wider wheels on it. Maybe a brake upgrade. Hey, there's a cool Mustang right there. Let's see if we can catch it. So um, anyways, yeah, getting back to what I was saying is uh, I would consider doing that. Maybe adding some more horsepower in time. Maybe we'll do that over the winter. I'm not too sure, but I think first and foremost I'd have to get wider tires on it. Um, let's talk about the tires. The car came with Goodyear, I do believe, F1 Eagles, something like that, and I burned them out long ago. And um, I put on some Super Sport, Michelin uh, Super Sports on it. And to be honest, I don't know how I feel about them. Handling-wise, way better. Um, and this is really weird, like getting out of the hole, really good. But going 120 kilometers an hour, I can burn the back tires on this, no problem. And I couldn't do that with the F1 Eagles. And I don't know if it's just they don't heat up enough or, or what really what it is. But I still like the, the handling characteristics of it better with uh, these uh, Super Sport tires on it. Um, you know, a lot of the people out there, like guys that review cars much better than me, always talk about uh, that this car doesn't handle. That's not true. This car does handle extremely well. You're working for it, and definitely there's some body roll on, on it like compared to uh, you know like a Corvette or the GT350 Viper whatever but uh, it does go around corners but you do have to be on your game it's no picnic to do it and that's another reason why I like this car is that everything you do you work for if you drive it right if your rev matches are on which mine aren't always on if your heel and toe shifting is good it will reward you and you can come out of a corner and uh, roll on the power and you're gone like it's it's a really great car, and in my opinion, and I've had several cars, uh, you know, I had two Dodge Challengers, which I still believe those are the best looking cars. Just the original SRT8s and that, in my mind, just weren't fast enough. I guess the Hellcat and the Demon have now fixed that problem. But, um, you know, in my mind, this car is really, was underrated or misunderstood for some reason because anyone who has them or takes uh, drives my car absolutely just laughs and smiles and giggles because it's so much fun to do so you know if you are out there thinking you want to get a high horsepower car and not pay uh hellcat prices or of course demon prices which i don't know who's going to be able to afford that this may be a car you may want to look at the 2014 and 13 editions especially 662 horsepower the car weighs 3850 pounds i do believe if you want my opinion take it for what it is it this is a great car and it's a lot of fun and i've had it three years and every time it still makes me smile and laugh and it strikes such an emotion in me so and we all like cars for different reasons and that's an important thing to talk about i mean some guys like the cruisers and they just want to cruise around go to the car shows have a coffee hang out with their buddies hey man that's really cool i'm all about that as well um other guys you know they want to go fast it's all about performance and performance driving and that's kind of where i find myself going the more i do this is i like performance driving i leave the city instead of going to a car show and i practice and i literally practice how quickly i can get into a corner how fast i can get out 
my rev matching, heel toe shifting, I practice. Some days I do well, some days I don't. And that's what it's all about for me. But hey, whatever you guys are out there for, you know, that's, that's really cool. I absolutely respect that. I would love to hear what you think. Thank you very much and uh, please stop by and we'll uh, check out uh, the cars we've got coming. My name's Earl Garnet. This is my pop machine. I keep beer in it. Stay tuned for the next episode of Rev It Up with Earl Garnet. What kind of car doesn't come with hazard lights? I seriously don't know where they are. Oh, wait, oh, there we go. Right near the traction control button. Makes sense. Because after you turn the traction control off and crash, with ease, you can hit the hazard lights. <laughs> hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for the next episode of Rev It Up with Earl Garth.